Hi, very good evening. Good evening, friends who are coming. I am waiting on the screen, sir. Screen, hi, hi, very, very good evening. What is the development? during this one day gap how many problems everyone has done may have a idea so monsi josna amandeep singh pratap apeksha ma'am josna ma'am radhika ma'am how are you all vishnu adan reddy how many problems you have done since last class is over i want to have an idea the number you have done during this 24 hours gap so today we are going to gear up with another new lesson which is very very vital for both neat as well as jee so before i get into the session just i would like to have a recap of the last session so still i am waiting who are coming and present for this session josna how many problems you have done radhika how many problems everyone has done i put a target of minimum 40 per day so i hope yesterday was holiday hi anjali very good evening soham rasogi i did thermodynamics around 45 fantastic anjali done really very very amazing 134 problems 134 wow first number second number add into third number soham rasogi electricity 30 vivek good evening how are you i want to know the problem number vivek radhika josna what are your figures i did not find you on the screen i think still you are waiting and uh, vishnu vardhan ready monsi how many problems you have done vivek what is the figure you have not mentioned the number of problems it's not clear that a red number what is that so today let us start the session and in the last class we discussed about the rolling motion and very 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 good important problems related to the rolling motion after that i have given you a good number of problems and i hope everyone has gone through them and rolling was radhika solved 60 problems of rotation very good radhika very very good and in the rotational motion the most important area is nothing but rolling motion and kinetic energy of rolling kinetic energy of translation and combined kinetic energy monsi did 70 problems good very very amazing among you all anjali has crossed century she performed 134 problems good a lot of spirit is there so and in the last class i have presented you a problem and in which the most of the students have got wrong the minimum value of f to topple about an edge here there is a block having a mass m shown on the plane surface and a force f is applied so then the minimum value of f 
so that the block topples about this point, this is a point toppling. So, here when you analyze the problem, see F B D, the force F is acting along x axis parallel to x axis horizontally and the perpendicular distance of the force as mentioned in the given problem is B and from the center of the block, the weight of the block is acting in the downward direction. So, as we know, we have to consider the torque about the morning a very good evening, how are you, how many problems you have done, Kushi very very good evening, fine many players have joined the game, really very very fine to see you all on the screen and uh, when you observe the torque, it is nothing but a moment of a force, force multiplied by the perpendicular distance F into B, the torque is equal to F into B, here that will be equal to weight of the body mg multiplied by the distance a by 2. So, from this the minimum value of f so that the block topples is mg into a by 2 b. This is the answer for the problem which was presented in the last session. So, toppling, toppling is created by the torque, torque moment of force, moment of force is nothing but force multiplied by multiplying the perpendicular distance f into b that is equal to mg into a by 2. So, you are asked to find the minimum force value, fantastic. Now, today we are into the another very very important topic which is very very important both for medical aspirants and JE aspirants. This lesson is gravitation and under this lesson you are having the first and foremost topic universal law of gravitation. When you studied about the gravitation, if you keenly observe the lesson gravitation and your 12th class this morning around 75 problems on rotation, super. So, when you analyze the topic gravitation in 11th class and electrostatics in 12th class, there are lot of similarities. There you had a force between the charges, here you are having force between the masses and the entire electrostatic was built upon the basic concept called as a charge and the entire lesson gravitation is built upon the topic called as the concept called as mass and as you know, there we started with the electrostatic force, Coulomb electrostatic force. Here we have to start with the Newton's universal law of gravitation. And based upon this, totally we can scan this lesson as a force concept. When you observe the family tree of gravitation, you will come out like this. Hi, just now, how are you? Just now I asked for you. So, when you observe the lesson gravitation, we can classify this lesson gravitation like this force concept followed by similar to electrostatics field concept, there you had electrostatic field, here you are having gravitational field followed by potential concept, there you had electrostatic potential followed by potential energy concept. So, similar to the electrostatics, this gravitation lesson is built up, but here entire gravitation we focus on the mass concept. So, let us see the first concept in this gravitation, universal law of gravitation which will give you the concept of force. Now, when you observe the universal law of gravitation, say I am considering two bodies having masses m1 and m2 and we this law states that every body in this universe attracts every other body with a force directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So, what is the statement of the law? Every body in this universe that is nothing but a M1 here I have taken just two bodies M1 and M2, M1 attracts M2 and M2 attracts M1 and these bodies attract each other 
with a force directly proportional to the product of their masses f is directly proportional to m1 into m2 that is the first factor whatever the statement let us give the mathematical shape and f is inversely proportional to square of the distance between them 1 by r square and f is proportional to m1 m2 by r square and there you know in the electrostatics f is directly proportional to product of the charges inversely proportional to square of the distance between them and finally there we have presented that f is equal to q q1 q2 by r square multiplied by a constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught here also you are having a constant capital g into m1 m2 by r square where capital g is a constant proportionality constant the name of capital g is nothing but the universal gravitational constant ugc what is the name of g universal gravitational constant there you had the constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught the value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught there it was 9 into 10 power 9 here this capital g has a value 1.67 into 10 power minus 11 so when you analyze the comparison between the forces their electrostatic force was both attractive and repulsive both attractive as well as repulsive but in the case of the gravitation there is no repulsion it is always attraction so gravitation force is attractive next electrostatic force were developed by charge gravitational force was developed by m yeah yeah 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 electrostatic force was developed by mass i mean charge and gravitational force was developed by mass and when you observe the electrostatic force it is very strong force and gravitational force is the weakest among all the forces first force it was the nuclear force second force it was electrostatic force third and the least force is a gravitational force next when you observe this uh, electrostatic force and gravitational force the similarities between them is uh, both are central forces means they act along the line joining the two bodies both are central forces they act along the line joining the two bodies so these are the comparison between the electrostatic force as well as uh, the gravitational force there you had a constant that is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught here you are having a constant called as universal gravitational constant next another difference there you had taken 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught that means this electrostatic force depends upon the nature of the medium but in the case of the gravitational force it is independent of the nature of the medium so that is another difference between the electrostatic force as well as a gravitational force that means electrostatic force is a function of the medium that is present between the two bodies but gravitational force is independent of the medium that is present between the two bodies whatever the medium you are taking it is not at all affected by that medium another similarity similarities i am underlining this is central force and when you observe another similarity there you had the principle of superposition here also hi abhishek very very good evening here also you are having principle of superposition principle of superposition means when a particle is surrounded by a number of particles then each particle executes force on the other particle then the force on the single particle is equal to the vectorial addition of all the forces there you dealt with the problems of three charges kept at the three corners of a triangle and three charges placed at the three corners of a square and what is the net force on individual charge these type of models you might have dealt in the electrostatics that principle we call it as the principle of superposition same is the case here you are having the problems related to the principle of superposition that means both electrostatic force and gravitational force 
will be mobilizing the rule called as the principle of superposition. So, these are the basic things and a relative comparison between the two forces. But this gravitational force is very weak when compared with the electrostatic force. But as far as this entrance point of view is concerned, NEAT as well as JE, really this is a very hot area, gravitation. So, my first question to you, when you observe this, here you said that G is called as universal gravitational constant. I want the dimensional formula of G. I want a dimensional formula of G. Universal gravitational constant G. I want its dimensional formula. Our time starts. First, for writing the dimensional formula, you are supposed to prepare the mathematical formula. So, G is equal to F into R square by M square. Universal gravitational constant G is given by F into R square by M square. F being the force, R square being the square of the distance, M square being the mass. Now, I want the dimensional formula of G. Your time starts. I would like to see who will be giving this simple question answer very fastly and very fastly with more accuracy. m power minus 1 l power 3 t power minus 2 this was given by Radhika m power minus 1 followed by l power 3 a power minus 2 Radhika came out with this still anyone this is in your 11th class you had another lesson units dimensions and measurements there you may have studied about this. Monsi came out with MLQ, M power minus 1 L cube T power minus 2. Very, very nice, very, very nice. So, let us check. Dimensional formula of force ML T power minus 2 and the dimensional formula of R square, nothing but L square and the dimensional formula of mass M. So, final dimensional formula in this case m by m square that is nothing but m power minus 1 l power 3 t power minus 2 very good this is the dimensional formula of the universal gravitational constant so and the units of g are nothing but the unit of force newton meter square by kg square that is a unit of gravitational constant g so, now let us go to the numerical part of this lesson. Problem number 1. So, let us get for the problems bus. I have taken the concept universal of gravitation and now I am firing the all possible problems, all possible related problems to this concept beyond which there is no scope to ask any other problem in any type of examination. So, first let us start with the problem. A mass M is split into two parts. They have not mentioned how it is split equally, you know, one third or two third or nothing is said, but they mentioned it is split into two parts. And uh, these two parts are then separated by certain distance. They mentioned that certain distance uh, they are separated. Then the ratio of the two parts that maximizes the gravitational force between the parts. They have asked the ratio of the two parts means ratio of the two masses so that uh, the gravitational force between the two parts is maximum. This is the narration of the problem. Once again, there is a mass having a value capital M is split into two parts. How the two parts are uh, divided? That is not given. Now, they are separated by certain distance. That is also not mentioned. So, then the ratio of the two parts, ratio of the two parts means you are asked to find the M1 by M2 such that the gravitational force between the two parts is maximum. This is a question your time starts. Let us do more examples today. So, your time started already and your time is running out. Apeksha, very good evening. After a long time, I am seeing you. Abhishek, good, good. So, I am Rasogi, Radhika, very, very nice. So, your time has started. So, I want the answer for this problem. Yeah, Radhika came very aggressively with a 1 is to 2. Mansi came with the ratio 1 is to 1. Wow, wow, many, many answers, really great. Still, 
So, Radhika declared the answer for Adhika declared her answer first 1 is to 2, Mansi declared her answer 1 is to 1 and Soham Rasogi came with 1 by 2 and Mansi came with 1 is to 2 and Samarnika ok ok Apeksha 1 is to 2. So, everyone has uh, came into the line of I mean the answer given by Radhika 1 is to 2. Your time elapsed. Now, it is a time of me. See how to analyze the problem. You will only say which will be the correct answer. Apeksha also came with 1 is to 2. So, this is a mass split into two parts. Say for example, one part is equal to small m, then other part is equal to capital M minus small m. Okay. Now, these two parts are kept separated by some distance. Let it be cap, I mean small r. Now, the force between them F is equal to G m minus small m into small m by r square. So, the first you have to set the equation for the force between the two particles F is equal to capital G into m minus small m into small m into r square. In a calculus under the topic differential calculus, you had a concept for a function to have either maximum value or minimum value, its first derivative must be equal to 0. Here the name of function is equal to force and when you observe this, this is a constant g independent our force is independent of and our force is independent of capital M and they mentioned that a certain distance means the distance is also constant. So, totally if I give you an apple, you can give half of the apple to your friend, one third of the apple to your friend, two thirds of the apple to your friend or just one fourth of the apple to your friend. So, here the variable part of the equation is small m variable is small m. So, differentiating f with respect to small m, then whichever the constant throw them out g by r square, it is in the uv formula d by dm of m minus m into u, u into derivative of v plus v into m minus m into a derivative of u that is nothing but d by dm of small m. As I said, as per the differential calculus, for a function to have either maximum value or minimum value, first derivative is equal to 0. So, then what happens, you know. So, g by r square go to the other side, d by dm of this, this all will be going to the other side, that is 0 into that something is 0. So, d by df of m, m is a constant. So, its derivative with respect to small m will be equal to 0 and derivative of small m with respect to small m is 1. So, this m, this m write, written here, derivative of capital M that is nothing but 0 and derivative of small m is equal to 1 minus plus m minus m into derivative of m with respect to m is equal to 1. So, m minus m is equal to, so 2 m is equal to capital M, therefore m is equal to m by 2. Now, my requirement ratio of the masses, so if one mass is equal to m 1, other mass is equal to m 2, both are equal, m 1 is equal to m 2 is equal to capital M by 2, as said by our Monsi, the ratio of M1 to M2 is equal to 1 is to 1. Monsi, whichever your first answer that was correct, then the ratio of the two parts, that is the question they have given, that sense to line, you forgotten. You have taken the ratio of M to M. Here, they have asked the ratio of the two parts. The ratio of the two parts is nothing but M1 as well as M. M1 to M2 that is equal to 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1 was already given by Mansi first. So, but later she changed her answer. So, the correct answer is 1 is to 1. So, be clear in analyzing the problem, what they have demanded, what they have provided. Provided information is data, demanded information is a question, interrelation is a formula. Got the clarity? Radhika, where you mistaken? Did you notice it? Whoever put 1 is to 2, 
did you identify the mistake? They have asked the ratio of the two parts. One part m is equal to m by 2, other part is also m by 2, then the ratio is equal to 1. Shall we take the next problem? Are you all ready for the next numerical? I am waiting for your admittance. I am waiting for your permission to attack the next problem. Anyone has any doubt in this problem? So, final ratio m1 is to m2 is equal to 1 is to 1. Now, any doubt in this problem? Abhishek, Mansi, Smarnika, Apeksha, Radhika and uh, Mansi, Rastogi, Smarnika. So, will you permit me to the next problem? I am not getting any information on the screen. Are you before the system? So, now it is a time of problem number 2. Hmm? But I did not listen. I cannot uh, hear their voice. Sir. Problem number 2 displayed on the screen, attack a uniform rod, I am narrating the problem, a uniform rod of mass capital M, length capital L is placed at a distance capital L from a point mass small m, then the force acting on the mass small m, this is the question, your time has started, once again. I am narrating the problem. There is a uniform rod of mass capital M, length capital L is placed at a distance capital L from a point mass small m. Then my demand is force acting on small m, attack. This is a problem based on first of all example was discrete particle exam, second example is CMD example, continuous mass distribution example. So, I asked you to find the force between a rod and a discrete particle M. So, this is the hint behind the problem. Yes, sir, Kaushik. Oh, very good evening. Yeah, those parts which are the ratio of the two parts which are used to maximize the gravitational force. So, when you observe that, eh, say in the previous example, initial mass EM, final mass EM and EM minus EM, EM value is equal to m by 2, then m minus m is also equal to m by 2. So, now I think you got the clarity Radhika, they have not asked a small m and capital M ratio, they have asked the ratio of the two parts 
after the division. So, this uniform rod problem, Abhishek you made mistakes in calculation it seems. So, Monsi came out with her answer 4 g m by 9 l square, Radhika came with her answer 4 by 9 f. Still I am waiting for few more answers. So, you are really, you are all doing very uh, increasing, very increasing way you are all attacking the problems, a very enterprising point to me. So, Kaushik Kumar came with GMM by something he has written L into L it seems, okay. Radhika, you got the clarity of the previous problem. So, they have asked the ratio of the two fragments M comma M minus M, they have not asked between M and M. Now, so it is a uh, Mallamna, oh very newcomer, GMM by X into X plus L, Apeksha calculated a ration between small m and capital M sir. No, that is not the requirement, small m and capital M is not asked, ratio of the masses of the fragments, ratio of the parts, masses of parts, masses they have asked. Now, so let us see the second problem. There is a uniform rod. They mentioned the values of uniform rod. Mass is m, length is l. And from the rod, a particle of mass small m is placed. Length of the rod is l. And the distance of the particle from the end of the rod is L. Now, when you observe this, for any CMD in center of mass, I told you very clearly, you have to start your analysis by taking a small portion of it. So, let us take a small portion of the rod. This small portion has a mass of dm and having a length of dx and placed at a distance of x units from the origin. So, first we have to find the force on this mass due to this small mass. So, that force is very small is given by df. As per our universal law of gravitation, j into small m into dm by the distance between this element and the particle. The distance is equal to how much? This total distance is 2L and this distance is x, then gm into dm by 2L minus x whole square. So, that is the expression for small force, but here dm is nothing but in the center of mass lesson I told, dm is the mass of the small element linear density multiplied by length of the element m by l into dx. So, dm is equal to m by l into dx, come back substituted in the equation. Therefore, df is equal to g small m in the place of dm, I am replacing the second step capital M by L into dx divided by 2L minus x whole square. This is the equation df is equal to g capital M small m into dx divided by 2L minus x whole square into L. So, once again I am writing on the board, df is equal to g capital M small m divided by L into dx minus 
dx by 2l minus x whole square. That is the force expression. Small force is due to the small element. For any type of CMD problem, you have to deal with the small force by considering the small element. After that, total force due to the entire rod, capital F, is equal to whichever the constant, throw them out, GMM by L, integration of dx divided by 2L minus x whole square and uh, entire rod means uh, its lower limit is equal to 0, upper limit is equal to L. So, GMM by L into dx by 2L minus x whole square, lower limit is equal to 0, upper limit is equal to L. This is the force you are supposed to find. Now, use your mathematical brain and I want the answer for this. Malanna, Radhika, Apeksha, Kaushik. Now, this is the mathematics behind the CMD problems. F equation GMM by L integration of dx divided by 2L minus x whole square. Lower limit 0, upper limit is L. Half of the problem I have done. I am waiting for your answer. 50 percent of the problem I only gave. Now, I want the final answer. Ballon now, the mistake committed by you is x is not given in the problem alone now. Whichever the variables they have mentioned in the problem, those variables only your answer must have. In the problem, what the variables they have mentioned, you know, mass n, length n and small m. So, your answer should be in the form of those variables only. I have not mentioned x anywhere. That is your own user defined variable. So, user defined variable has no space in the final answer that is the intermediate variable which will help you for computation purpose. So, now I want the value of f. So, who will give the correct answer? I am eagerly waiting. Radhika, Apeksha, Josna, Kaushik, derivative of x power n. I am giving one more hint. Derivative of x power n is equal to, I mean integration of x power n is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1. Derivative of x power n is equal to n into x power n minus 1. So, like that, here it is a question of integration. Integration of x power n is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1. So, I have served another hint to you. So, I hope you are all very busy in computation. Am I right? So, probably the answer may be releasing out within few seconds. Am I right? Radhika, Josno. So, entire problem was described, narrated and solved 50 percent. Now, a small part is left for you to see how effectively you will de deal with the, this integration and differential calculus. Apeksha, any, I am not finding any of your messages on the screen. Any problem from your side? Whatever the previous message, they are only there. You are not responding, Radhika, Malana, so 2L minus X whole square you can write it as 2L minus X, I want the answer, minus 2 plus 1 by minus 1 minus 1 0 to L. Okay. So, 2L minus X minus 2 plus 1 by minus 1 into minus 1. Final answer will be 
g m small m by 2 l square. That is the answer for the continuous mass distribution problem. G m m by 2 l square, it is not f by 6 radhika ma'am. So, once again check your calculation. G m m by 2 l square is the final answer. Please make a note of the steps which already I mentioned on the screen. Everyone please, everyone has not done this problem. So, the final answer is G m m by 2 l square. Today, what are the problems I am feeding you? They are very high end problems, but you are supposed to know them because you are a, your batch is a mix of J and NEET. So, these models will help you for both of you. Now, I am taking you to the problem number 3. 3 masses, each of value m are placed at the 3 corners of a square of side A, then the force on the unit mass placed at the fourth corner. So, it is a problem related to the principle of superposition. As you dealt in electrostatics, triangle model, square model, regular hexagon model like that. So, here also three masses, each of value cap limb are placed at the three corners of a square. So, let us give a picture for the given problem. So, these are the three corners of a square, Malana, but there is a, some difficult facing in integration. Yeah, Malana, uh, generally when you are aspiring for the prestigious Indian exams like uh, NEET and uh, this uh, uh, JEE, first of all, you might be thorough with this uh, calculus portion particularly integration, differentiation, trigonometry. These three areas you must be. So, I, Malana are you aspiring for uh, medicine or uh, JE? If it is a JE, it is a must, you being a mathematical student. If you are a biology student, it is, a, it is also a must to learn them. So, here I have taken three masses having the values cap lem, cap lem, cap lem are placed at the three corners of a square of side A, A, A. Now, it is a problem based upon the concept called as principle of superposition and I kept another mass, unit mass m is equal to 1 at the fourth corner. Now, my requirement, what is the force experienced by this unit mass placed at the fourth corner? This problem is a hybrid problem. It is a mix of vectorial calculus vectors as well as your principle of superposition. So, when you observe this problem, this mass is attracted towards this corner. For example, this is corner 1, corner 2, corner 3. So, corner 1 you kept a mass capital M. This capital M will attract this small m towards itself because as I said in the very beginning, this force is a independent of medium, point number 2, it is always attractive, it is a no question of, there is no question of repulsion. So, this mass attracts this unit mass towards itself and this mass at the third corner attracts that unit mass towards itself and the mass at the diagonal will attract this unit mass towards itself. So, now it is your vector brain to operate on this problem. So, first figure I have given as shown in the screen with uh, our uh, Soham Rasogi came out with some answer. What the answer given by Soham Rasogi, you know? Uh, he said the force on the unit bounce G M M by A square uh, root 2 plus 1 by 2. It was the answer given by Soham Rasogi. Now, Kaushik also given some answer. So, you are all uh, getting some uh, correct, uh, fine uh, correction is to be done to you. Try to read the problem very clearly and uh, I have kept some sensitive points in the problem where I can uh, 
uh, make you trap in the problem towards the negative side. So, that trap, that uh, uh, trap you should be able to diagnose in the problem. So, always uh, there are traps in the problem to commit mistakes by the student, but you should be well aware. So, here it is uh, these two forces at the corners to, for example, this is F, this is F. So, the resultant force of F and F as given by, this is the resultant of the two forces, root to F and a diagonal force is also there, F dash, root to F plus F dash is nothing but F net. So, here F is equal to G M by A square. The mistake committed by you, Rastogi, you have kept small m, but I mentioned in the problem unit mass. So, you have to replace small m with 1. So, F is equal to G m by A square and F dash is equal to G capital M by root 2 A square. Diagonal distance is equal to root 2 A for A square. So, that is nothing but 2 A square. So, your final answer F net should be root 2 G m by A square because they are perpendicular to each other plus G m by 2 A square. So, this is the after taking the common, what do you get the common in this G m by A square common line to, then what do you get root 2 plus 1 by 2 is the final answer. F net is equal to G m by A square within the bracket root 2 plus 1 by 2. Fantastic. So, you are very enthusiastic in the due course, we will do few more examples. So, now it is the time of contest. A magnet is placed in a non-uniform magnetic field. It experiences a force but not a torque, torque but not a force, a force and torque, neither a force nor a torque. So, answer is C. The winner of this, Soham Rasoge, give a big clap. Very good, Soham Rasoge, congratulations. You have got one atom session free. Really awesome, Soham Rasoge. These bits may appear to be very simple, but every bit is involved with some concept. So, you may feel it is very simple because it is not requiring any calculation, but it is hidden concepts are there. Be clear in the theoretical applications also. And the contest time for the tomorrow in a double star system, two stars of masses M1 and M2 separated by distance small d rotates about their center of mass. A Khango Soham Radhika is declaring. So, the common angular velocity is how much? So, this is the question. Once again, I am repeating. In a double star system, two stars of masses M1, M2 separated by distance small d rotates about their center of mass then the common angular velocity is how much. So, options are given. Tomorrow, I will see who will be the winner. Summary of the class, we started with the Newton's law of gravitation. So, in that we came out with a few applications. Thank you for joining. Have a good day friends. Today, from today being Wednesday, next session will be on, I mean Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days. Per day, you are supposed to finish 30 problems. Your target on Monday, everyone should say. 120 problems we have done, you have to say honestly, I hope you will all do, you are with kids, you are not ordinary kids, have a nice day, thank you, bye, have a nice evening.